this video, we will go over the de novo synthesis of pyrimidines. So the three main pyrimidines are cytosine, thymine, and uracil. Uracil is found in RNA, uh, whereas thymine and cytosine are found in both DNA and RNA. So pyrimidines have one cyclic structure, so it's only one ring. And uh, it's much more simpler than purines in that this process in the de novo synthesis, de novo means from scratch, uh, takes place in six steps. So let's go over quickly um, where the atoms come from in a particular pyrimidine molecule. It's important to remember that this is the skeleton structure of the pyrimidine. This is not the structure of cytosine, thymine, nor uracil. Uh, in fact, it's a very simple process to actually get from uracil to thymine. That's a donation of a CH3 group. And it's very easy to get from uracil to cytosine. That is a donation of an NH2 group. The, donor, the NH2 donor here is glutamine. This methyl donor, donor here is tetrahydrofolate. Um, so, um, so we're not really making cytosine, thymine, uracil. We're making the backbone first. So um, there's three main molecules that we are incorporated in the from scratch or de novo synthesis. So carbons number one, six, five, and four come from the amino acid aspartate. We saw aspartate before. We saw aspartate in the urea cycle. We saw aspartate being the alpha amino acid to the alpha keto acid oxaloacetate, which is the TCA cycle intermediary. We also saw aspartate not only in the urea cycle, uh, but we saw aspartate, if you remember, in the de novo biosynthesis of purines. Remember, aspartate was an important uh, amino donor for the synthesis of AMP, and also aspartate was an important amino donor for the synthesis of IMP. Remember, IMP branches out to form AMP and GMP. So aspartate has a multitude of functionalities within the cell, besides being an amino acid that's incorporated into proteins. Uh, don't forget also that aspartate is a primary amino reservoir donor during two-step transamination. Carbon number two comes from bicarbonate or CO2. So a lot of cellular respiration produces CO2. It's very easy to go to HCO3 minus or bicarbonate through the enzyme carbonic anhydrase, which is sort of ubiquitous, many different isoforms in the cell. And then finally, glutamine uh, donates uh, the atom number three in this cyclic ring monocyclic ring. So we have the amino acid glutamine, again, a major amino donor uh, in biosynthesis. Uh, glutamine, um, along with glutamate and aspartate, are very much involved in sequestering uh, toxic amounts of nitrogen. CO2 is a main byproduct of respiration in many, type of, many types of metabolic reactions. And aspartate, uh, we already mentioned before, uh, some of its main roles outside of being incorporated into proteins. So here we go with the six-step de novo biosynthesis. One of the most important things that discriminates this from the biosynthesis of purines, adenine, and guanine is this step right here. So PRPP, phosphoribosyl pyrophosphate, is actually added later on. So you notice here the ribose and the phosphate moiety are added at around step five, the penultimate step in the synthesis of UMP. So two important points here. One is PRPP is added later in purine biosynthesis. Remember, PRPP was the very, very first step in the pathway, and we build that nitrogenous ring from PRPP or on top of that PRPP scaffold, uh, as it's known, uh, but not so here in the uh, pyrimidines, uh, the, one, the nitrogenous bases that have only one ring. So our PRPP is not really a scaffold. It's added later on. And then the second important point here is that we make UMP. Just as before, we're dealing with the RNA version of the molecule. We're not doing anything with DNA. In order to get to DNA, we have to uh, do a ribonucleotide reductase reaction to strip away the oxygen from carbon number two of the ribose molecule. So stripping away that oxygen gives us the deoxyribonucleotide. Uh, and that is done in a separate enzymatic step, once again known as ribonucleotide reductase. 
as before, looking at the structures of these enzymes, uh, we see here a lot of multimers, multiple subunits. Here we see a dimer um, here, and uh, here we see a, a, a lot of uh, symmetry here. Here we have fourfold symmetry of the tertiary structure, uh, multimeric forms here, AT case a very uh, heavily regulated enzyme in E. coli, not so much in mammalians. As you can see later on in this PowerPoint, uh, the mammalian version of this pathway and the E. coli bacterial version of this pathway, uh, while they are the same, the structures are very, very different. In fact, uh, we don't have so much regulation in this step in mammals, whereas in E. coli, this step in bacteria, particularly E. coli, this is the rate determining step. So going through the process of the synthesis of the pyrimidine molecule, we're starting out in generating UMP. From UMP, we can easily go to CMP, and um, actually we go to deoxyTTP, or deoxyTMP, I should say. Um, but uh, we're going to make the first uh, pyrimidine that we make is UMP. So. Um, the first enzyme in the pathway is CPS2, okay? Not CPS1, which we saw in the urea cycle, but CPS2. So fundamental difference between CPS1 and CPS2 is that obviously CPS1 is found in the urea cycle, and CPS2 is found as the very first step in the pathway to make the pyrimidines. The very first pyrimidine made is uracil monophosphate. Uh, in that regard, CPS2 is a cytoplasmic enzyme, whereas CPS1, uh, the very first enzyme in the urea cycle, is exclusively housed in the mitochondrial matrix. A second major difference between CPS1 and CPS2 has to do with the donor of the nitrogen. In CPS1, in the urea cycle, that donor was NH3, or the ammonium ion, ammonia. Uh, in CPS2, the donor is a glutamine molecule. So everything is the same except the donor, the nitrogen donor, and the nitrogen donor in the de novo synthesis of UMP is uh, in CPS1 for the urea cycle, the nitrogen donor is NH3 or um, ammonium ion. Other than that, CPS1 and CPS2 are predominantly the same don't forget CPS2 is found in the cytoplasm. So as before, we make carbamoyl phosphate, and this is the first reaction of the six-step six pathway to make UMP. The second step of the pathway is to take carbamoyl phosphate. Remember, this came from the amino acid glutamine. This came from um, bicarbonate and CO2, we should say. The second step of the pathway in E. coli, heavy regulated enzyme, AT case, uh, not so much in mammals, but uh, the reaction is the same, both mammals and in E. coli, that aspartate gets added. And it sort of gets added to this carbon here. And in that regard, the enzyme that does that, again, we're looking at the E. coli version, a different enzyme does it in mammals. And the um, enzyme is AT case. Um, generating carbamoyl aspartate. Once again, AT case, AT case, excuse me, is the E. coli version of this reaction. And so uh, notice there is no ribose biphosphate, there is no PRPP, it's coming in later. And let's do an inventory here. This carbon came from CO2 or bicarbonate. This NH2 came from glutamine cps1 is the N cps2 excuse me is the enzyme that does that and then finally this nitrogen this carbon and carbon and carbon come from the amino acid aspartate okay so you can automatically see the ring structure that monocyclic ring structure being formed um, right before our eyes at least uh, the skeleton the structure is beginning to evolve the third step of this pathway and this six-step process in the de novo synthesis of UMP is to uh, actually uh, make a ring structure. So cyclization uh, generating a ring. So you can see here this reaction sort of makes that ring. And you see that here, the name of this molecule, the cyclic form is dihydroorotate. The enzyme is a dimer and it requires the metal zinc. The enzyme that does this is dihydroorotase, giving us the product dihydroorotate. Nothing is being added here. 
um, we're just forming a ring. In reaction number four of the de novo synthesis of UMP dihydroorotate, uh, via dihydroorotate dehydrogenase generates a double bond in this part of the molecule. So by generating that double bond in this part of the molecule, we have this coenzyme known as quinone that gets reduced. And this is a redox enzyme. You may remember quinone as a lipid molecule, also known as coenzyme Q, that's soluble in the lipid membrane. But coenzyme Q is an electron carrier. We see coenzyme Q in the electron transport chain. Uh, and here we're seeing coenzyme Q in the form of quinone uh, participating in this dehydrogenation reaction. So notice the multiple cofactors that are involved, NAD+, the flavin mononucleotide, the flavin adenine nucleotide. Uh, there's an iron sulfur cluster that's also involved. And in essence, uh, we form a double bond here. The molecule is orotate. Quinone, uh, by virtue of it being soluble in the lipid, this enzyme is part of the inner mitochondrial. <laughs> In reaction number five, the second to last step of this pathway, PRPP gets added. So here we have that phosphate and that ribose sugar. Uh, notice it's the beta anomer. Uh, the ribose and phosphate are added in the fifth step. And this is a difference between purine and pyrimidine biosynthesis. So remember in purine biosynthesis, we build on this as a scaffold. Not so here. Okay. We add it in the second to last step of the enzyme. The molecule that we generate is OMP. The enzyme that does that is orotate phosphoribosyl transferase. PRPP is added in this step. Uh, we already made the ring. We already made O uh, orotate. So adding the ribose and the phosphate gives us OMP, the monophosphate form. The enzyme is a dimer. Finally, we make our final product, UMP. So this is the ultimate destination in making that pyrimidine skeleton. From here, we will make C uh, in the form of CTP, and we will make T in the form of deoxy-TMP. And orotidine monophosphate, or OMP, gets decarboxylated. The enzyme is a decarboxylase. And finally, we get UMP. Notice the difference here between OMP I'll highlight this. Notice the difference between OMP and UMP. The difference here is the decarboxylation. So by decarboxylating OMP, we generate our final product, our final primidine UMP. Just a brief word here, uh, the difference between uh, eukaryotic and prokaryotic metabolism, specifically E. coli. In E. coli, we had a, a separate enzymes that actually do the step with a heavy emphasis on AT case, which is the main regulatory enzyme in um, E. coli, pyrimidine, bio uh, de novo biosynthesis atp case uh, the enzyme that generates aspartate um, carbamylase um, not so in animals in animals the first two enzymes or the first two reactions in the pathway are catalyzed by cad and then the last two enzymes in the pathway that we just um, talked about are catalyzed by a homodimer named UMP synthase. So the five reactions here, um, three of them are sort of mixed in one polypeptide known as CAD, and then the last two are mixed as one polypeptide. Their functionality is mixed as one polypeptide known as UMP synthase. So once again, this is uh, the situation in animals. Um, in E. coli, the main regulatory enzyme is AT case, uh, the enzyme that produces aspartate transcarbomylase. So we actually finished with um, the process of making the pyrimidines. So we made UMP, if you remember, and it's very easy to get to UDP through the action of kinases. And then it's easy to get to UTP, the molecule shown here, through the action of another kinase. So phosphorylation to the mono 
and diphosphorylated form, and essentially the triphosphorylated form are, can happen pretty easily in the cell. Um, how do we make CTP then? Uh, CTP is generated through the donation of an amino group. So if we're going to highlight the difference between UTP and CTP, the difference relies upon the fact that in UTP we have this carbonyl group, whereas in CTP um, we have this amino group. Well, who donates that uh, amino group? Uh, the amino group is donated by glutamine. Okay, so glutamine donates that amino group. Energy comes in the form of ATP. Glutamine donates that amino group and becomes glutamate. And the enzyme that does this is CTP synthetase. CTP synthetase. And notice here we have the triphosphorylated form of the nucleotide, and we're still in the RNA stage. Okay, we didn't really make any DNA. For us to make DNA, uh, we need to strip away that oxygen. The enzyme that strips away that oxygen is ribonucleotide reductase. Finally, in this slide, we want to talk briefly about the different regulatory steps uh, that differentiate E. coli with mammalian pyrimidine de novo biosynthesis. And the main point I want to illustrate here is that uh, the main multimeric enzyme AT case uh, the enzyme that generates carbamoyl aspartate, that's the main regulatory step. Remember, this enzyme, this multimeric enzyme, heavily regulated enzyme in E. coli, is the enzyme that produces um, carbamoyl aspartate from carbamoyl phosphate. So that's the main regulatory checkpoint. Here, uh, looking at the uh, animal system, uh, we have a, a little bit of a different array of regulation. Uh, notice that PRPP can activate CPS2. Um, UMP feedback inhibits um, its own biosynthesis. So the regulation is dramatically different. Uh, looking at the E. coli version, ATP actually feed forward activates AT case. So once again, the main theme here, despite the reaction being essentially the same, notice the reaction is pretty much the same. Uh, the differences lie in the regulation, where in E. coli, the enzyme that makes carbamoyl aspartate is heavily, heavily regulated, not so much, not so much in the animal version of pyrimidine biosynthesis.